Gentlemen, what is going on today? My name is Ryan Mickler, and I am the host and the founder of the Order of Man Movement and Podcast. Welcome here. Welcome back. Glad you're tuning in with us today. I've got a very, very important one. All right, I've been doing this for almost six years now, and what I'm going to share with you today is extremely, extremely important. It's going to impact the rest of your life, and if you follow the advice that I'm going to share with you today, your life is going to be better. Bottom line. Period. Your life is going to be better if you listen and you heed the advice that I'm going to share with you today. Now, some of you might be thinking, how do you know? Questions I get quite often are, you know, what makes you the authority or the epitome of masculinity? I'm not saying that at all, guys. All I'm saying is that we've got hundreds of thousands, if not millions of men across the planet who are tuned into this podcast, who are tuned into the socials, who are listening to what we're saying, and I'm listening to them. And one of the things I hear over and over and over again is how not heeding the advice that I'm sharing with you today has also impacted their life in a negative way. Guys, deciding who it is that you want to partner with for potentially and hopefully the rest of your life, if not into eternity, is obviously a very important decision. And I've seen so many men make the mistake of getting overly emotional and getting hopped up and thinking that love is the only factor to take into consideration when choosing a partner, and it's not. In fact, if that's all you're doing, I would say that that's a recipe for disaster. So we're going to get into that in just a minute. Now, if you're new here, this is a podcast dedicated to helping you become a more effective man. It does not matter if you're trying to show up with your family with your business, your employees, your clients, yourself. I'm going to give you the tools, the conversations, the resources, the guidance, the direction, everything that you need to step up more fully as a man. And you know as well as I do, if you're listening to this podcast, that we need more men in this fight. What is the fight? The fight is to reclaim and restore masculinity, to place it back up on the mantle that it once was and establish or reestablish our authority, our credibility, uh, within the walls of our home, our businesses, our communities, government, and every other facet of life. So we've got a podcast that we do. Obviously, this is it. Uh, we do interview shows with guys like Jocko Willink and David Goggins and Grant Cardone and Andy Frisella and Mark Manson and Ryan Holiday and Jordan Harbinger and Brian Rose. I'm trying to think about the men that we've had on, and you can see that it's diverse. We just had Aaron Marino to talk about style last week. Uh, and that podcast did, or actually I think it was this week. It was this week. And that podcast did very, very well. So uh, needless to say, we're putting out good information and I appreciate you being here. One last thing before I get into it, please just leave a rating and review. All right, go to iTunes or Stitcher or Spotify or Pandora or where, wherever you're listening and just go in there, leave a rating and review. It's going to take you two minutes and it's just a good way to say thank you. That's it. It's a good way to say thank you. And also it's a great way to expand the mission of reclaiming and restoring masculinity takes you two minutes, literally no more than that, two minutes. And uh, I think it's a good way to say thank you for what we're putting out there. I don't ask a whole lot of you. That is what I ask of you. All right, guys, let's get into this. So as I was thinking about what I wanted to talk with you about today, because the, the, the title of, of this episode is what to look for in a woman and how to foster it in her if you already have one. So I'm going to try to talk to you guys who uh, aren't in a committed relationship just yet. At some point, you likely will be. And I also want to talk with you in the second half of this podcast with those of you who already are in a committed relationship because sometimes it's a little too late. You didn't heed this advice initially, or maybe you didn't hear it, or maybe you didn't know it, or maybe you didn't have a father to teach you it. I'm going to teach it to you, and I'm going to tell you how to foster it in, in a woman that you may already have. All right, so the first part is, again, Pretty, pretty well for, or, or ex I don't want to say exclusively, but it, it's for those guys who haven't committed to a woman yet. Please heed my advice, all right? It's very important. I've, I've seen it over and over again where men have not heeded this advice, and it doesn't go well, ever. Divorce, sadness, sorrow, loss, being isolated from your children, financial issues, because people don't heed this advice. You're thinking with your dick instead of with your head, and that becomes a problem, or your heart. I'm not saying that isn't a consideration. I'm just saying it's not the only consideration. Let's get into this. Number one, what to look for in a woman. Number one, independence. 
Guys, you need to find a woman who is independent. And ladies, by the way, there's about 5 to 10% of my audience who is women. By the way, please listen to this because this is what men are looking for. So this will give you some tips too because what I want to do is I want to make you more attractive to men and I want to, to make men more attractive to you and more attracted to you. So this is going to help everybody. Number one, independence. If you're dating a woman who is not independent, meaning she's clinging on to you or somebody else or her parents for everything and she can't do things on her own uh, and, and she needs to look to you for all the guidance and advice and wisdom and, 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 and feedback, man, exhausting. Now, it might feel good initially, and here's the trap. It feels good initially because you feel wanted, right? Isn't that what we as men want to do? We want to feel wanted. We want to feel needed by the ladies in our lives. And that feels really good. But I'm telling you, it comes at a cost. And that's your own sanity and your own well-being. If she's dependent on you, or even worse, dependent on her mom or her dad or her sister or siblings, friends, and not dependent on you, that's even worse. Because what you want is you want a woman who is independent. Actually, you want a woman who doesn't need you. She doesn't need you. Now, I know that sounds a little counterintuitive, but I promise you, if you can find a woman and make yourself more attractive of, be of becoming the kind of man who would attract this woman where she doesn't need you, you're going to have a better life. Again, it's going to feel good initially where she needs you and she depends on you and she's calling you all the time and she's asking for your advice. Why? Because that's appeal to our vanity, to our own sense of ego and arrogance, but it becomes exhausting and it comes at your own personal well-being because if she's so overly dependent on you, how are you ever going to have time to take care of yourself? You're not because you're babysitting. I don't want a girl. Man, that's, a, that's, that's girl like behavior. And they're obviously they're clearly there's a distinction between a girl and a woman. That's why I don't call women girls, by the way, guys, you'll never hear me call a woman a girl because I, I think it's insulting because a woman is mature. She's strong. She's capable. And ultimately, hopefully, she's independent. If she's not those things, she's more like a girl. So you'll never hear me, hear me call a woman a girl because that's not what they are. Guys, you don't want a little girl. You want a woman. That's going to make your life better. And a woman is independent. She doesn't need to turn to you for every little whim and every little thing that could potentially come up. She can make her own decisions. Now, granted, she will, she will ask you. She will take into consideration your feedback and your input and your expertise and your credibility and your authority that you hopefully have built up. She will ask you those things, but she doesn't need it to make her own decisions. And that's what you want. All right, number two, low maintenance. Holy cow, I see these women on Instagram and social media and everywhere else. And uh, I mean, just, just the amount of time, for example, that they use to put on makeup, you know, hours and hours a day. I'm like, oh, please shoot me right now because I could never, ever, ever deal with that. Or that she needs my attention all the time and she needs me to tell me how good she looks and how wonderful she is and, and she needs that validation. Or she has daddy issues. Now, granted, she may look great. Why? Because she spends like three to four hours a day on her appearance. Guys, don't, don't fall into that trap. All right, that's a, that's a short term, hey, she's hot okay, you know, do your thing or whatever, even though I don't advocate for that, but this is not a long-term relationship, not long-term relationship material, I should say. All right. You, you don't want a high maintenance woman. She's going to look good. She's going to be like eye candy, right? She's going to be on your arm and you're going to walk in and all the dudes are going to think you're, 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 you're the man. And deep down inside, you're going to be miserable and she's just going to eat at your soul. And, and I know I'm, I'm using language that maybe is, is a little, uh, uh, hyperbolic, but, or exaggerating, but honestly, guys, like we've all been with a high maintenance woman, right? And how exhausting and how miserable there's no freedom. There's no flexibility. You need to give her all the attention in the world because she can't get it on her own. She's not confident, surely. So what does she do? She, she bolstered us up with, with, with big boobs and fake eyelashes and all the lipstick and like two inches of, of, you know, just layered frosting on her face. This is not what you want, guys. This is not what you want. And if you're going to the club to look for a woman, probably this is what you're going to find. All right, you want a low-maintenance woman. Again, this goes back to point number one, somebody who's independent. She's strong. 
She's convicted. She has beliefs. She has viewpoints. She's intelligent. She doesn't need to rely on the way, you know, her, her eyelashes stick out just an extra half inch longer. Or her boobs just, you know, the right amount of cleave is just popping out of her shirt. That looks great. But again, this is not long-term relationship material. And if you're looking to partner with someone for your life, then probably you ought to find somebody who's low maintenance. I'm not saying she doesn't take care of herself, by the way. Okay, my wife takes care of herself. But she doesn't spend countless hours in the mirror and, and, and doing, you know, duck lip selfies and asking how she looks. And, oh, do my, does my butt look big in these jeans? I don't even know if my wife's ever asked me that. Because she doesn't need to ask me that. She's got enough confidence in herself that she doesn't need to ask a stupid question like that. This is the kind of women we should look for. Number three, guys, no drama. If you ever see any drama, just avoid it. That's a deal, that's a deal breaker, actually, for me. Now, who am I to say what you're attracted to? Okay, who, I, I can't make these decisions for you. I'm just telling you, I've seen thousands and thousands of men go through this and complain about some of the things I'm addressing today. And I'm just telling you that a woman who has a lot of drama, whether it's daddy issues or ex-boyfriends or girlfriend drama or, you know, she's the victim of, of what everybody else does to her, stay away from it. Stay away from it. I got, I got more shit to worry about than what you're upset about right now. The trivial BS and nonsense that you're upset about right now. I'm not going to deal with it. I don't have time for it. I'm not interested in it. And, and I'm not going to play the game. And that's exactly what it is. It's a game. It's, it's, it's an appeal for attention, which goes back to point number one, independence, and point number two, low maintenance. Drama is an appeal for attention. All right, she doesn't really care about the things that she's upset about. She just wants the attention by pretending to be upset about the things that she's pretending to be upset about. Get rid of the drama. By the way, here's a good strategy I would suggest is get to know your future partner's mother especially if they're close. Odds are she's going to turn out a lot like her. So I think it'd be a good idea to meet her mother. Also meet her father. That's a pretty good idea. Because, because it's going to give you an indication of where your life potentially could go. It's not the only indication, but it's symmetric. It's something that should be considered. And if you've got a potential or a future mother-in-law who's filled with drama and, 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 and high maintenance and she's not independent and she's clinging and everything else, well, you know, pretty good odds that her daughter's going to turn out that way too because she was conditioned by her. Now, I realize, guys, as I'm talking about this, this might sound misogynistic. That's what people will accuse me of as I talk about this. Fine. I'm actually okay with that. If, if I'm helping you men stay away from and avoid these five traps that I'm going to suggest to you today, I got through three already, and, and somebody's going to call me misogynistic because of it, I'm okay with that because I'm going to save you. And I don't consider myself your savior, but I'm telling you, if you heed this advice, I will be saving you. If you find the opposite and, and attract the opposite woman of the things that I'm sharing with you today, and I'm going to get into this here in a minute, then uh, your life's going to be better. So if somebody wants to call me misogynistic because of it, fine, fine, so be it, because I want you men to have a good life. All right, number four. So I got point number one, independence. Point number two, load maintenance. Uh, point number three, no drama. <clears throat> number four, femininity. Guys, you're going to want a woman who's feminine. All right, the, there, there's a great injustice to men and women everywhere. And, and that was the, the, the feminist movement of the 60s and 70s. Now, I think it started out with noble intentions, maybe to some degree. You know, women's rights and, and, and making the same amount of income and the right to vote and all these types of things. I, I think that's all wonderful. And in fact, it's important. I agree with a lot of that. But the feminist movement has morphed and it's warped and it's become distorted and it's just become disgusting. And what it's essentially said at this point is that a woman should be more like a man. Not that a woman should be a, a feminine. The feminist movement is not about the care for women. It's not about making women more womanly or more feminine. It's about turning them into men. And they do that in two ways. Number one, they undermine masculinity. That's so, you know, bring them down to their level. And, and number two is make women more like men. So this is the strategy, right? And so what we have is we have a lot of women who are running around who have bought into the idea that if they act more like men, then somehow they're more valuable. Well, I don't know about you, but I believe that a woman who gives birth, who, who bears children, who makes a house a home, who provides guidance and support and nurturing and love and, and, and all of these things, 
that I would consider womanly, feminine, that to me is significantly more valuable, not just to me, but to society than any woman who pretends that she has to be a man to be important. Ladies, the, the, the five to 10% of you who are listening to this podcast, you don't need to be a man to be important. Your loveliness, your, your, your beauty, your, your kindness and your compassion and your empathy and the ability to bear children and to be motherly and to support and nurture is worthy in and of itself. And I am so grateful that I found a woman who understands because her mother taught her this and her grandmother as well, taught her what it meant to be a woman. And it doesn't mean be a man. It means embrace all of the lovely things that make you women. And guys, if you're, if you're out there looking for a woman who acts more like a man in, in competitiveness and in, in aggression and dominance and career aspirations, I'm not saying that's inherently bad. I'm just saying you ought to be aware that you're not going to probably get a, 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 a very feminine woman. Now, if you're okay with that, all the power to you, and I hope it works out well for you. But I know there's a lot of guys listening who would love to have a, a, a woman, a wife, who wants to mother their children, who wants to stay at home and turn their house into a home, who wants to potentially homeschool their children and teach their children the way they should go, who wants to cook. You know, we hear the old adage, barefoot and pregnant. Look, I know we're making a mockery of that, but you know, like my wife, we've, we've had four children. I love the fact that I, I loved when she was pregnant. I mean, it was hard and it was challenging, of course, and she would say the same thing, but she was bringing our children into the world. When my wife makes me and the children dinner, I don't think less of her because she made us dinner. And she actually, she doesn't think less of herself because she made dinner. She feels like she's adding and contributing in a way that is meaningful and significant to her. And this is going to become more important, guys, and increasingly difficult to find, by the way. As the feminist movement continues to lead women astray and make them believe that the only way to have value and worth in their life is to act like men. No, let the men act like men and let's honor and cherish and celebrate the fact that women act like women. All right, and the last one, guys, ambition. I can't tell you how often I hear from men who say things like, you know, my wife isn't motivated. I'm, I'm trying to get back on the path. And of course you would be. You wouldn't listen to this, be listening to this podcast if that weren't the case. And I hear from these guys who are like, ah, oh, my, my wife isn't motivated and she's not ambitious and she's, you know, put a few pounds on and, and, and she's lost her sense of purpose and direction, which certainly is, is, you know, prone to happen. Same, same thing with us guys. You know, we get married and we start popping out a couple of kids and, uh, we get in our careers and we put a few pounds around the midsection and we lose some interest and hobbies and we lose our friends and activities. You know, this happens. This is, this is a natural thing, but, um, you're on the path. You need to find somebody who's ambitious now you might be thinking, well, that's at direct odds with the point you just made about femininity. No, I'm not. Or no, it's not rather. It's not at odds with it. I'm not saying that she needs to go out into the workforce and become the next CEO of the Fortune 100 company. Ambition for her might be different than it is for you. It took me a long time to realize this, but I have a wife who is extremely, extremely ambitious. Now that doesn't mean that she's out wanting to conquer the world like I do, but man, you can't find a, har a harder working housewife. You can't find somebody who's as committed to making uh, uh, the, the garden grow and, and, and the yard look great and the home lovely and comfortable and warm and inviting and her children, my children, our children, uh, being, being nurtured and being supported and feeling loved. Like my wife is fully vested in that. She's very ambitious when it comes to that. It's a different ambition than mine. You know, I want all those things, but that's not what I'm going to actively work towards but she's got things that she's excited about. And she's just as excited about those things as I am about my things. So she doesn't need to be interested in your stuff, guys. She needs to be interested in her stuff. As interested as you are in your stuff. That's what I'm talking about when I talk about ambition. Not that she's going to make her dent in the universe. Not that she's going to change the world. Not that she's going to be the next CEO or the next president. Although if she wants to, great. But that she's interested in something She's fascinated. She's intrigued. She's working towards becoming better and improving her life in some capacity. That's what she should be looking for. So guys, let me recap and then I'll go to uh, how to foster this in, in your wife uh, or your girlfriend if you already you know, have, have one. So again, point number one, look for independence. 
Point number two, low maintenance. Point number three, no drama. It's a red flag. Point number four, a, a woman who is feminine and, and loves being feminine. Uh, point number five is she needs to be ambitious. All right, let's go into how to foster this because some of you guys are already married and you're like, what do I do? <laughs> like you've made a commitment and I respect and honor you for making that commitment and want to stick this thing through. Maybe you've had a hard time. Uh, maybe you realize, man, you know, maybe you made some, made some uh, poor choices. But again, I honor you for making that commitment and wanting to stick with it. Maybe she's changed a little bit. So how do we begin to now as the patriarchs of our home? By the way, guys, patriarch is not a swear word, right? It's a good thing. It's simply the male leader of the household or the community or the tribe or the business. Like it's amoral, okay? It's not, it's not a bad thing. You need to become a good patriarch. And here's how you do it. Number one, when it comes to independence, and so I'm going to counter these with what to look for. So I said what to look for is independence, how to counter this or how to foster this is don't solve her problems. All right, don't be her white knight. Because if she, she always has these problems and you come in to rescue her or save her, well, what's she going to do? She's going to be more dependent on you. Let her fix her own problems. Now, that doesn't mean you can't offer guidance or direction or counsel or insight. You, you should. That's your job as a man is to offer your perspective and your insight and to help her with the problems that she has. You're, you've partnered with her and, and her job is to do the same for you. But if you save her, if you solve all of her problems, if you rush in on the white knight and think that she needs some sort of rescuing, you know, you're, you're only fostering dependence, which is the exact opposite of what you should be fostering, which is independence. That she doesn't always need to run to you like she ran to maybe daddy to solve all her problems. Let her figure out some of this stuff on her own. And when she says, hey, what, you know, what should I do? I'm struggling and I've got this going on. I've got that going on. What should I do about it? Your answer should be, what do you think you should do about it? What have you already tried? What are you going to try? How are you going to solve this problem? Now, granted, there's some situations, of course, where you may need to step in or some situations where, you know, yeah, it makes sense to offer your advice, but let her, I don't want to say struggle a little bit, but let her let her break the, the shackles or the chains from you. It's only going to be a good thing. Now, some of you are so concerned that if you, if you foster some sort of independence, she'll, she'll leave you. Well, this is a whole other conversation, but this is about making yourself more attractive to her. We're going to have these conversations, but don't be threatened by that. If she's more independent, yeah, if you're a loser, yeah, she's probably going to, she's probably going to throw you to the curb. But if you're not a loser, and we've been talking about that for five and a half years, then you fostering this independent is on, independence in her is only going to make you more attractive. So don't solve her problems. Let her solve her own problems. She got herself into the mess. Let herself get out of it. Offer advice and input where, where deemed appropriate. All right. Number two, I talked about finding somebody who's low maintenance. Uh, here's what I would say. Don't be so available. Don't be so available. I mean, some of us guys, oh my goodness, are so physically and emotionally and mentally available that it's like you're right there and you're like a cute little loyal puppy dog that, that she can just turn to and, and, and dump all of her baggage on you or, or, you know, she'll be in the bathroom looking at her makeup and, and spending two to three hours in there and you'll just be sitting there like a good little boy that you should be and all you're doing is you're encouraging that behavior. Don't be so available. Take some hardline stances and some things. I'm not telling you to be a jerk, but, you know, sometimes it's okay to say, you know, I'm going out with my friends tonight. Oh, how do I look? Yeah, you look great. I'm going out with my friends. See you. Love you. Bye. Let her be on her own. Let her know that you don't need her in your life. Now, you want her, sure, but you don't need her in your life. Some of you guys might as well just, like, let her, you know, wrap you up in some of these little dog carriers that I see some of these high maintenance women walking around with, and they're literally like carrying their little lap dog in their purse with them. That's you. Some of you are that little puppy dog and you're so available and you're getting railroaded and you're allowing her to be high maintenance because she knows she's got you on the short leash. Don't be that dude. All right. It's a recipe for disaster. Instead, take the collar off, take the leash off and say, hey, hon, love you. Go in and hang out with the guys. 
Hey, hon, love you, but I've got a hunt coming up this weekend, and I'm going to be gone for three days. But what am I going to do? I don't know. Figure that shit out because I'm going to be gone. So I'll help you up until this point, but I'm going to be gone for three days. I mean, I know guys that their wives call them like two, three times an hour. What the hell could you possibly be calling me for uh, that often? Now, when my wife calls me, I usually answer because she doesn't call me all the time because she's, she's low maintenance. So if she's calling me, I'm like, oh, something's up. But if she's calling me every 20 minutes, every 30 minutes, I mean, I've been on hunts where a wife, oh, my, you know, little, little Timmy threw up. Okay. So clean, clean it up. Like, wh- what do you want me to do about it? I- I'm, I'm across the country at, on a hunt. Like, wh- like, what do you want me to do about it? Well, I just wanted to tell you, I don't need to know about that. <laughs> Clean it up and then drive on. <laughs> Give them some, uh, some saltine crackers and some chicken noodle soup and some ginger ale and let little Timmy get on about his day. Like, I, I don't need to know about that. Or I don't need to tell you how to clean up the throw up. I mean, I know it's not pleasant, but you can handle that. This is exactly what I'm talking about. You guys do everything for your for your woman and, and, and wonder why she's so high maintenance, wonder why she's such a headache. Well, stop doing stuff for her and don't be so available to do those things. All right, point number three, no drama. Don't be your girlfriend, guys. Be the man. Be your boyfriend, be your husband. Don't be your girlfriend. I talked about this in the Ask Me Anything. You can go back and listen to it. Some of you guys are so emotionally available. Uh, you're, you're talking to her like a girl would talk to her. You're complaining and bitching and moaning about your life. Uh, you, you're having gossip and gab sessions with her. Uh-uh. Nope. Nope. If my wife comes to me and, and she wants to talk to me like a girlfriend, I'm like, you know what? I love you, hon. I think this would be a great conversation for your friend, not for me. And I'm perfectly okay with saying that. In fact, I don't even need to say that because she has girlfriends. We're going to get to that in a minute because she knows that there's some things you got to go to your girlfriend for and there's some things you got to go to me for. She knows the difference. She understands the difference and she acts accordingly. And I act accordingly. When she comes to me about drama and wanting to complain, nope, mm, nope, not doing it. I'm not your girlfriend. This is not a conversation that we're having. Now, if you need to share something and it's important, it's crucial to our lives or our children or you or something, yes, of course, we can have that conversation. If it's a gab session or a gossip session or or a drama or a high maintenance session, mm -mm. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm not interested and uh, I'm not playing that game. So you have girlfriends. And in fact, I would, I would suggest that you tell her to find some girlfriends. Like you have, you have friends, guy friends that you hang out with, right? If you don't, you should. And when you say, Hey hon, I'm going to hang out with the guys for the weekend. Um, why don't you call Cindy up and uh, see if she wants to go to dinner with you or wants to come over and, and, and talk or whatever, 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 but foster her having girlfriends and don't be the girlfriend. Cause if you act like a girl, she's going to treat you like a girl Well, you're not a girl or you're not a woman. I should say, this is, goes back to what I was saying earlier. You're not her girlfriend. You're not a woman. You're a man. So act like a man and don't step into the girlfriend rule uh, role. Keep yourself apart from that. Number four, femininity, right? I told you find a woman who's feminine. Well, in order to find and foster femininity in her, you need to be masculine. Because if you're feminine, what does she need to do? She needs to be masculine, right? Like I know know of a lot of guys who are masculine, or excuse me, who are feminine in nature and they have these women and their women are, are more masculine. And look, if that's the dynamic that works for you, great, but acknowledge it. Acknowledge it. Be truthful about the situation because if she's masculine and you don't want her to be masculine, then maybe you ought to question your masculinity. Now, this is about the time guys say, well, it doesn't take a beer or guns to be masculine. I'm not even suggesting that. But it does spend, take spending time with other men. It does take competitiveness. It does take physicality. It does take stoicism. It does take some of these more masculine activities, whether it's sports or physical activities or shooting or spending time with the guys. Now it's not going to define you as a man, but it certainly bolsters testosterone production. We know that scientifically. We know that we know that even competition and specifically winning at that competition will boost testosterone production. Sex will also produce and bolster testosterone production. So, you know, sometimes you need to go initiate it. You know, you get home from a long day of work. Don't plop your ass on the couch and 
drink a beer and watch a show, like go ravage your woman. Like show her that you're the man and that you want her and that you're attracted to her sexually, emotionally, physically. Be the man. And when you act like a man, you free up the space for her to act like a woman. Some of you are, are hoping, and look, I did this too for a very long time. I wasn't acting like a man in the house. And so I was subconsciously asking my wife to be both the wife and the husband to fill both the feminine and the masculine role. Well, that was a recipe for disaster. We went through almost a near divorce because of it. So lose the weight, drop the alcohol, get working out, initiate sex, compete with other men. These are all things that are going to help you be more of a man. And she's going to be attracted to that. And then you're going to leave the space and the margin for her to step into this femininity, which by the way, guys, she wants to, she wants to be a woman. She doesn't want to be a dude. She wants to be a woman. And you have a big part to play in that if you've made a commitment to her. Okay, well, I'm going to fill the masculine role so you can fill the feminine role. If you're not willing to fill the masculine role, then she's going to feel obligated to do both. And then she's going to burn out. And then one day she's going to come to you and she's going to say, I'm not in love with you anymore. How many of you have gone through that experience? You know exactly what I'm talking about. The spark isn't alive. I, don't, I, I love you, but I'm not in love with you. Yes, that's your fault. Because you weren't being the man that you should have been. And you asked her to do both whether it was consciously or subconsciously, you asked her to do both and now she's burned out. And guess what? She's looking for the dude who's going to be more like a man so she can be a woman. She wants to feel like a woman. She wants to act like a woman. She wants to be beautiful and lovely. And you need to create it by being strong and capable by being a man. All right, and point number five, and I've talked about this at length in the past, guys. You need to foster her interest. Guys, you need to foster her interest. It's not about getting her to read the same books or listen to the same podcast or be engaged in the same activities as you are. It's about fostering her interests, finding girlfriends, finding activities. My wife does canning, food preservation, uh, beekeeping. She does stuff for homeschooling and she does little, little arts and crafts to, you know, for Sunday school lessons and for the kids. And, you know, I used to tease her and just poke at her a little bit. I don't do that anymore because that's actually what I want her to do. I want her to feel important by contributing that way. And so when I would tease her, you know, I still banter with her, but I would really get after her about these, you know, little stupid arts and crafts. That's a mistake. I shouldn't tease her about that. That's what I want. I want her to feel important. I want her to be excited about canning. I want her to grow her garden. I want her to keep her bees. I want her to uh, do, do projects and be prepared for the homeschool lesson that she's going to teach the next day. And so when she does those things and I see them, Psychology 101, I, I acknowledge it. I congratulate it. I, I compliment it. And the more that I'm aware of what she's doing and the effort that she's putting forth, although it's not the same level of effort, not, the same, not a, that it's not the same level, it's not the same type of effort that I'm putting forth, the more she's likely to continue down that path. And you have more power when it comes to this than you believe. But you got to do it. When she does something and you think, oh, that's silly, it's not silly. It's not silly. It's important to her. And if it's important to my wife, then it's important to me. If I say, oh, that's stupid or that's silly or I can't believe you spent, you wasted your time doing that. (laughs) How insulting can you possibly be? I've been there. I've done it. I still do it. I still make the mistake from time to time. But I try to be conscious about saying, good job. Congratulations. Wow. That's awesome. That's amazing. I even see it in my daughter. My daughter and and my wife, uh, they made a pie the other day, an apple pie. And you know, I wasn't interested in apple pie, but I ate apple pie because my daughter made it and she was excited about it. And I want her to be excited about the things that she's interested in. So I ate the apple pie and it was delicious by the way. And uh, she felt better because she was able to nurture and to support and to add value in the home in her own way. Not my way. I'm not, I'm never going to bake an apple pie guys. So don't bank on that. But it's not about me. It's about her. That's her way of adding value. And I foster that and I compliment it and I acknowledge it because it's important to her and that makes it important to me. So guys, let me recap on this. Guys, I'm just telling you, 
I'm telling you, these are very important lessons. A lot of you guys are going to forget about these things. A lot of you guys are going to find this attractive woman who's high maintenance and she's beautiful and, and, and you know, she looks the part because she's got two inches of makeup caked on her face and her eyes are big and her lips are, you know, bright red and she's got her, 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 her chest is sticking out and, and you're going to like everything I just shared with you is like going to go in one ear, ear out the other. Don't do it, please. Because you're the guy I'm going to need to hear from in two to three years. You're like, oh, my wife is this, my wife is that. Yeah, well, you knew it when you got involved with her, but you overlooked it because she looked the part. It's not about looking the part. It's about everything else I'm telling you. So here we go. What to look for in a woman. Number one, independence. Number two, low maintenance. Number three, no drama. Number four, femininity. And number five, ambition. And here's how you foster it. Number one, don't solve her problems. Number two, don't be so available. Number three, uh, don't be her girlfriend. Number four, be more masculine so she can be more feminine. And number five, foster her interest, not yours. Guys, I know this will serve you. I know this will help you. I hope, I hope that you listen to what I'm sharing with you. And if you don't, you, you know, you can, you can go down that path. I'm just telling you, you'll come back in two to three years and wonder why life isn't what you want it to be. But if you heed this information, you heed this advice, you're going to be better off. Now, I'm not going to say things are going to always work out or that it's going to be perfect for you, but it's going to be better. It's going to be better. All right, guys, if I missed anything or I was off on anything based on what you believe, cool, share it with me. Let's have a respectful conversation and dialogue about this. Ladies, I'd like to hear from you too. Am I off? Am I right? Am I wrong? I think I'm right. I think you're going to agree that I'm right. But if I'm not, or I missed something, or I was off on a point, share it. I'd love to hear it. And uh, we'll continue this conversation on the, uh, on the socials, on the interwebs. Uh, Instagram is the best place at Ryan Mickler. Twitter is also somewhere I'm spending a lot more time, less and less time on Facebook, but Twitter is also at Ryan Mickler. If you want to watch this video, which is, you know, just me talking ahead. I don't know why you want to do that, but if you do, that works better for you. Uh, you can go to youtube.com slash order of man. Again, as I said earlier, leave a rating, leave a review. It's a great way to say thank you. Uh, tell me what you thought about the podcast, what you think about the podcast in general. It's a great way to expand the visibility and the mission of Order of Man, which is to reclaim and restore masculinity. All right, guys, I'll be back on Tuesday. Until then, go out there, take action, and become the man you are meant to be.